Hi, Al Barrera here with the HWA video team interviewing Nancy Holder. Nancy Holder is a five-time Bram Stoker Award winner, Toastmaster of the 2017 Stoker Convention, and a prolific author. Thanks for joining us today, Nancy. Hi, Al. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's, I'm really excited about this interview, actually, uh, you, because I am a big Buffy fan, as I'm sure a lot of our viewers are, uh, and you have done a ton of work in the Buffy universe in addition to your own series uh, like Wicked, which are also very widely read. Uh, can you tell us what it's like to kind of juggle those two things, like your own independent work and working with other people's fiction? Sure. Um, one of the things that is the best thing about working in other people's uh, intellectual properties, let's say other people's universes, is because those characters and situations are already established. People know that world. We don't have to spend a lot of time explaining that. And so because of that, what they find is a story about those people. They don't, and that situation. So you can have a mystery Buffy, you can have a scooby new Buffy, you can have a funny Buffy, you can have time travel Buffy, and people will go with you because it's Buffy. And so if you have your open series, for example, Wicked, Wicked had a flavor, Wicked had a world, Wicked had a tone, and we couldn't depart from that. It can't be, oh, now here's funny Wicked, because it wasn't that established as, for example, Buffy or Angel or um, Walking Dead, it was, it's, there's so much more defined in people's heads in a sense of a franchise or continuity or, you know, Buffy had comics, Buffy has TV, Buffy has so much stuff that we actually, in a lot of ways, we writers had a lot more freedom to write different kinds of books as long as they had Buffy elements. Because Buffy is a very established universe, with millions of viewers and millions of people who know about Buffy. We, the writers of the books and other material, actually in some ways have more freedom writing about an established character, an established universe, than we do writing our own fiction. Because you have to make sure in your own fiction to keep the tone, the characters, everything consistent from one book or one short story or one whatever to the next. Mm -hmm. In Buffy, that's already preordained. And so as long as you stay true to the Buffy-ness of something, you have a lot more freedom to play in a lot of ways. I did historical flashbacks and funny parts and romantic parts. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss five bucks goodbye. <laughs> because it's Buffy. And so people think that somehow people like me who write a lot of tie-ins are constrained, we actually have more freedom to experiment. You actually have more chances to try new things because you already have the anchor of this franchise to hold you up, so to speak. Just like episodes, there's Bunny Buffy episodes and romantic ones and really dark ones and light ones and guest stars and not guest stars. So as long as we stay true to the Buffy part of it, you get to go all over the place. So the secret for me with people, how come you keep doing this, is because I have a lot of freedom to experiment that I might not otherwise have unless I did like a short story or something or just wrote a whole book that might take or might not work. So in a lot of ways, um, being able to write tie-ins is a very giving and freeing experience. So you get approached for a lot of tie-in work, uh, you write a lot of your own work. What is, what is the trick to being such a, a prolific author? Like how does that work for you? Um, I want to thank my university, the University of California at San Diego, because I had amazing writing teachers there. Um, one of my teachers was named John Waterhouse, and he taught us, I had these very small two to three person special classes with him. I don't know what it was called now, 198 is what it was. And um, we were able to learn the very, very foundational craft of writing and uh, the, all that how-to stuff. And then I can port it from one sort of genre to the other. So as long as I know how to do these how-to things, there are all those things that are in books, like how to do characterization, how to do description, how to do, how to plot. All of that was so well laid out at UCSD that I've been able to port it and do it with different things. And that is my big secret, is I've had a toolkit. 
And I had never written a lot. Um, you know, a lot of writers start out, they write one novel, they try to sell that novel, they keep trying to sell that novel, the, they get a response from an agent or an editor and they rewrite that novel again. Mm. And pretty soon they've been writing this novel for eight years. Well, you have to write it, let go, write it, let go, write it, let go. And that's one thing. So I've just written a lot. And over, I've been, my first book came out in 1981. So I'm a little older than some people. But I, so I've been writing a lot. And so I just learned, oh, this isn't going to work. I can't do that. I'll try this. And so that's, that's my big secret, is that I just write a lot, and I have these basic skills that I posit very directly to having gone to college. It's my college, University of California. It's funny because it seems like every time I ask a question like that, like, what's the secret to being a successful author? The answer is always the same, right? It's like, you just keep writing. That's what you do. You keep on that, writing. That is true. That is very true. I mean, think about it. If you were going to become a sumo wrestler, would you be like, okay, I'm here. No, you have to go through a ton of, ton of wrestling. You have to try a lot. You have to get kicked out of that little salt ring a lot and, and fail a lot. And if you just go try one or two times and they go, well, clearly I'm not a writer, then <laughs> you're not a writer. You stop writing. So the only way you can stop is fail is to, to not start or to give up. So you're going to be the Toastmaster for the 2017 convention this year. Yes, I am so stoked. Stoked I'm for Stoker Con? Stoker Con. <laughs> I'm stoked about Stoker Con. Um, it's going to be awesome. And I know a lot of writers are introverts. And I promise you there will be places to hide on Queen Mary. I wrote a book that was a Bram Stoker Award winning novel. And to do the research, I stayed on the Queen Mary decades ago. And it's creepy and it's scary and it's fun to stay there. And you'll be with all your buddies, us. And it'll be a big, a big horror family. And uh, so if people need a break, they can go get a break, but if we're there to have fun, to share knowledge, and to have a blast. And they know we will. It's California, it's Long Beach, it's Queen Mary, it's all there. And it's George R. R. Martin, and Liz Hand, and Gretchen McNeil is going to kick ass. <laughs> it is, absolutely. So everybody should go. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, getting to meet you face to face come April. Thank you, Ralph. Can't wait to see you. All right, we'll see you then. All right, take care. You Thank too. You. Bye.